This is Josiah Plays Disco Elysium. Alright, we've just returned to the mainland from the island where we met the deserter and where we met the Insulindian Phasmid. Well, fellow, they said from the very beginning, I mean, you know, if you ever watched inter interviews about the game beforehand, that they consider that it that it was fantasy in a sense. I can't remember the exact term he used for it. Something like fantastic realism, or something like that, where it had it had some fantasy elements, even though it was largely a, a realistic type world. I mean, if you don't put anything really different about your world in, it's not that much world building. Anybody can just take Earth and just change the name of everything slightly and call it a setting. But you gotta put a few unique elements in there that aren't in Earth. You're quite oh, the tide boy. brought in. Fucking Jean. Does the man without sunglasses, no longer wearing his stupid wig. Suddenly his expression changes. And he tilts his head. Harry, you're bleeding all over the place. You're half dead. Forget about all this, there's a giant. We're not forgetting about anything. Look at you. Points at you with both hands. No one else seemed bothered by the bleeding. Bothered by it? Harry, you look like you need a fucking organ transplant. Honestly, Jean, I'm feeling pretty good. I got max health right now, buddy. I'm feeling pretty fine. Fuck it. Let's not get into that. Takes a deep breath. Who are you people? Hello, I'm Trant Heidelstam. I believe we've met on several occasions. This guy! I knew there was something up with this guy. He wasn't just some random bystander. I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicmar, and this is your special task force. Or oh, what's left of it. What's up, Splode? How you doing? Welcome. Okay, why does he tell me this now, and he didn't tell me this when he was sitting there in the fucking whirling in rags? He, I even tried to get this information out of him, and he wouldn't say it. Why now, dude? Your house is still without power. Oh, shit. Again. Man, how many times are they going to do this? Where, where are you, Splode? Where did you go? No, you're right. They did recombine pieces of the real world in an interesting way. That's certainly true. You drove down towards San Jose area? Are you staying with a friend, or are you in a hotel, or what? What's up, Brindle? How you doing? Or what's left of it? Oh man, that sucks, Blood. Alright, so this is my special task force, allegedly. Special Consultant Trant Heidelstam, Patrol Officer Judith Mino. Hi. 
We have come to scrape what's left of you off the pavement. Now? Lieutenant Kim Kisuragi, Precinct 57. We've just come from the island where our investigation led us. Points to the sea fort. We might need your help with something later. He adds, suddenly regaining his confidence. But this is clearly a departmental matter, so I'm going to leave you to discuss it among yourselves. <laughs> Number three! No, Kim, you gotta have my back. Let's destroy them! <laughs> Good to meet you, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. She says warmly, flashing Kim the tiniest of smiles. I hope not, Splode. I'm doing good. Alright, what is this about? Ari, we want to help you. Trant, I believe this is where you come in. Mr. Trant, why didn't you tell me who you were? Instead of playing Mr. Mysterio. I don't appreciate that. This is the horse-faced woman. I don't know why you named her that, but it was beyond idiotic. You should never address her using those words again. Um, I don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. He makes air quotes. No, Trant, it's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? Duped again! No one's who they say they are. Duped? Hey, here's a brilliant idea. Don't be a morbid drunk and you won't be duped so easily. Gardener, scab leader, this. Turn to the lieutenant. Tell me at least you are who you said you were. Yes, I'm still Kim Kitsuragi, still a lieutenant from Precinct 57. The nasal cavity? Oh, Nox. <laughs> oh, Nox! Still caught up in this crossfire, too. We're... You aren't the man with sunglasses at all. You're not even blonde. Guilty as judged. He exchanges the look with the special consultant. I heard you'd lost your mind and your memory. I wanted to see if it was true. And it was. Good work, Harry. You're insane now. There's one less person for me and everyone else to rely on. Well, I don't like being lied to. I didn't lie to you. No one lies to you. You are so fucked up on booze you couldn't recognize your own partner. You. Nod to the female officer. I'm sorry I didn't recognize you before. It's okay, she sighs. I didn't come here to gloat or to fool you. Neither did he, actually. He gestures toward Vikmar. We are just worried. That's right. Worried. I'm always worried about you. Every time you don't show up to work. Or when you do, but stink. You're a worry fest. She's worried about you. I'm worried about you. Even special consultant backpedal is worried about you. Everyone worries instead of working. Where have you been all this time? Where have we been? We've been fucking off as far as I remember. He crosses his arms. 
You told us to fuck off. You said we were cramping your style. Your detective god. Fuck everything. All will burn. Detect or die. <laughs> Detect or die. <laughs> Why didn't you detect or die then? Nice. Why would you leave a literal police god? <laughs> Those are some good responses there. Oh, we'll burn. Satellite officer Rick Meyer. Make no mistake about it. Here we go. Alcoholic delirium. Visions. All must pay. He shakes his head. How'd you know I was here? The cafeteria manager you fucked over told us where you went. After all that Sylvie stuff, he betrays me. After all that Sylvie stuff, he betrays me. Shit, kid. He says, shaking his index finger. He didn't betray you. He just told us the direction you went in. Who's Sylvie? I can't believe I can bring up the cock carousel thing again. This much later in the game. All of this cock carousel thing, all of it, is just because I failed one empathy check. <laughs> Well, Sylvie's a whore. She rides a cock carousel. <laughs> and foreigners. Super, he says with a nod. Ho, oh, foreigners, hatred. Um, and... She interjects, trying to defuse the situation. People on this street helped us, too. You're a legend among the drunks, Harry. A legendary local drunk. So Trent Heidelstam turns out to be Special Consultant Trent Heidelstam. Yes, I'm Trent Heidelstam. I never said I wasn't Trent Heidelstam. Wait, what's up with the kid then? Mikhail? Mikhail's my son. His son? What a joke! Everyone is lying to you! <laughs> oh yeah? Where the fuck is your son now, special consultant? I sent him home, he responds calmly. Miguel is with his mother. We share custody. I told you, he is one drink away from killing someone. I wouldn't quite say that, but yes, he is displaying aggression, not the typical of... Late stage alcoholism. Okay, so what are you special consulting here? What indeed? He looks at the dilapidated shacks, then you. I was asked to share my take on some of the more obscure theories developed in Kunigstein in the 30s, like uh, partial psychotraumatic amnesia, group personality theory. He's here to see if you're insane. He's smart. Let's move on. Oh, you mentioned a task force? Yeah, major crimes unit under Lieutenant Dubois and Vicmar. Ring any bells? Refresh my memory. Who else is in this? Refresh your memory? It's a goddamn major crimes unit. There's you, me, Jude, Trant fucking Heidelstam, and Guillaume Bevy. He stares at you. I'm technically just a civilian advisor. Fuck you, you're part of this shit show. Yeah, um, first, who's Guillaume Bevy? Oh, that's an interesting story, actually. He's not smiling. Guillaume Bevy is a police reporter who joined our team. He was really good. 
then he left because he lost faith in your ability to lead the unit. Other people have left too. Good, smart people. People we won't get back. Only me and this really patient patrol officer are still here. And Trant, because I'm forcing him to stay. This dude is a way shittier partner than Kim. Okay, so what does the unit do? Do? It's a major crimes unit! We clear the desk of cases! So Precinct 41 doesn't look like the worst station in town! We're shit tier now, Harry! Because of you! They're your posse, or what remains of it. Hand picked, hand lost. Probably had to put up with your shit for years. That's true, a brindle. The 41st isn't. He trails off, not wishing to finish the, sen the sentence. None of this is ringing any bells. The bells aren't ringing because you have brain damage. Trant! He turns to the blonde. This is where you come in. How bad is it? Well, he doesn't have visible tremors. He talks without slurring. He can drive a boat. He's standing, reasoning, all good signs. But complete retrograde amnesia, episodic and semantic. Hey, 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 what's up, son? As displayed in the station call, our interactions with him and I don't want to be a snitch, he makes air quotes, but also mind with him before when Harry did not seem to know who I was. It's so very interesting. Interesting? Yes, interesting. I have my theories, but I would like to hear Harry's thoughts first. Harry, he turns to you. What do you think happened to you? Neurologically, psychologically, and why not, uh, socioeconomically? <laughs> Number one is fucking good! Wait, socioeconomically? You think I'm so poor I lost my memory? <laughs> Not when you phrase it like that. But I don't think critical theory. I know everyone thinks this is far-fetched, uh, pink academia, but still, I don't think it should be off the table here. What? He lost his memory because of capitalism? <laughs> I'm so poor I lost my memory? No, not like that. I'm not talking Vreedfoot school here. But, uh, Harry, I asked you, what do you think happened? Ah, uh, capitalism, Trance is right. Something so happened sad that I couldn't be me anymore. I'm a highly experimental detective. This was a method I used to solve the case. Might have something to do with an anomaly in the church, a two millimeter hole in the world. I made it all up. I drank so much I lost my memory. Oh, it's a tough choice. Yeah, they did find the hole, and then we used the transmission or whatever from the hole in the church to like make the music better <clears throat> it might have something to do with an anomaly in the church there's a two millimeter hole in the world oh yeah there's actually a hole in the world it's not it's not fake Corresponding to the 20 centimeter hole in your brain? Sure. 
This theory has great symmetry. I see how it folds into itself neatly. Precisely, Satellite Officer Vic Mare. It's Martinez. A crab man! Of course I've got to bring up the crab man! <laughs> of course I've got to bring up the crab man! I'll explain later, but there's another man who lost his memory. A crab man! <laughs> Fucking Kim. I can't even read these lines without... Okay. With a straight face. <laughs> I can't even say this fucking line. Crab man is an unfortunate choice of words. But I was there. The church on the coast shook from an audio-spatial anomaly. It may have been anthroponetic, or perhaps related to radio waves. Either way, I have put this into my report. You should read it. I do not, however, think it has anything to do with him drinking himself to the point of brain damage. Oh, see? Kim's on my side. Thank you, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Just to clarify, I do not think Isolari Entroponetics are a hoax. Pale produces global phenomenon. It's proven. However... What has not been proven is total memory loss after drinking too much Commodore Red. Honestly, I think he's just lying to us. But... Detective Vigmar... She interjects. He has blanked out before. I have? Isolary Entropenetics. Hashtag making shit up. Yes, a couple of times. After some of the more serious benders. She pauses, remembering. One was after the two drunks case. The other when we looked into that mural. Hey, I wrote down things about these cases in my ledger. I read, I read the case files for these cases. Those cases were hard on you. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it. Prepared. That's where he would have gotten the idea. Yes. Practice. And then he used alcohol to get there, so to speak. What do you mean? Well, here is my theory. What if this is an absolutely normal reaction to the world we're living in? What if this is not a significant anomaly at all? Something to be explained, approached as a defect. Look at the sensory input here. He gestures toward the scenery. Look at the ruins, the neon. Listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people. Live here for 40 years. As a police detective, he's like a magnetic reader on the world tape. To borrow a known metaphor. Harry's been pushed flat against it. Uh, total input. Alright, what the fuck are you talking about, Trant? Hardwired to the free market. He nods confidently. We just need it for it to end. Trant and his tape computing. Yeah. Trant's a fucking robot. Calling it now. No, he's not really, probably, but... <clears throat> okay, Trant, thank you! That's absolutely meaningless. <laughs> kind of. I'm glad we brought you. Will he or will he not be able to work in the Major Crimes Unit? Is he a creator now? I want to know that. Trant is explaining windblown chicken. Basically, he is not a cretin, and he is able to do work. If not in his previous leadership role, then as a line detective. Fuck all of you! I don't want to be in your unit. 
No, Harry. Fuck you. You have already fucked us. I've already explained this shit to Price twice. To Berdyayeva four times. I'm your partner. I answer for you even when you're not there. When you clocked out, I became responsible for your cases and your special task force. They can keep that pension. You're rock solid. You can put your clothes on hard. Uh, what does that mean? I can put my clothes on hard? Uh, wh what now? Now nothing! Now we're just going to stand here! Really? No! Now we discuss that! He points to the water. What the fuck did you do to our motor carriage? Why is it there, Harry? Uh, well, this is... This is awkward. I mean, look, we didn't really want that motor carriage. Hold on, in the ocean? Feign ignorance. It was told by Jacob Urwa! <laughs> Traffic hooligans? I thought the killer would be underwater! He wasn't! <laughs> that one's amazing! But I gotta go with number six. I thought the killer would be underwater. He wasn't. Time had come to kill the sunset. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. He grabs his stomach in mirthless laughter. Tequila sunset. No sunrise because you're almost dead. So funny, Harry. Thank you for fucking me. Thank you for destroying 45,000 real of police property that's coming out of my payslip. You know that, right? You're gonna get fired, and I'm gonna pay till I die. Good, fuck you. It doesn't matter. He exhales to calm his breathing. Your badge, Harry. Show me your badge. Wait, my badge? It seems like a lot. Yeah, you'd have to pick up a lot of bottles. Look, if you think about it, I've met, like... 60 people, 60 or 70 people in this little part of town, and I've asked them, a lot of them for money, and I've already gotten, like, I don't know, like six of them to give me money. So, if, like, one out of every ten people I meet will give me money, then all I need to do is just go through a larger part of the city and just keep asking people for money. I mean, one guy gave me a hundred bucks, and a lady gave me a hundred and thirty bucks, a dude gave me ten bucks, a dude gave me twenty-five bucks, right? I mean, at this rate, if I just keep asking randos in the city for money, I could, I could raise those funds. There's a lot of people in this city. I've met a fucking cryptid, yeah. I'm the greatest cryptozoologist in the world, motherfuckers. You think I need your shit job? <clears throat> the thing that tells people you're a police officer. I got my badge right here. Ooh. Legendary failure on interfacing. In a rush to demonstrate your badge, your eager fingers can't sustain a grip on the smooth plastic and the badge slips out of your hand. He squints at it suspiciously. <laughs> Joyce, there's a guy going around throwing firebombs at company mercenaries and boats! <laughs> I can stop him for a small donation of 45k, <laughs> keeping it real. <laughs> nice, Knox. Finally, he nods, unimpressed. Okay, and your gun?
Gun. Gun. Just repeat gun. Yeah, gun! The thing that was given to you to kill people! Well, I found my gun, but then I realized I didn't need it, so I left it behind. <laughs> That's the best answer. Are you drunk? <laughs> Are you drunk right now? You're drunk right now, aren't you, you fucking bum? I can smell it! Technically, I'm not. Yo, it doesn't even matter that I found my gun! You were never supposed to lose it in the first place! Not lost is your gun's natural state, you drunk bum! Yeah, I'm drunk. I'm also on drugs. Who are you posing for, huh? A suspect escaped, Harry. Claus is something. Because you are too high to assess her flight risk. We've read the reports, Lieutenant Kitsuragis. We know. Oh, here we go. We got some fun ones here. She was some kind of spy, actually true. She gave a vital clue that led us to the island, actually true. But obviously, obviously, we're going with six. That doesn't matter. None of it does. We're looking at the oxygen holocaust. Time's a quadrillion. The only reason I know about the oxygen holocaust is because the cryptid told me about it. I've come to know the final fate of man and the universe. Oh, well, if you got really high, then I guess it's okay. He rubs his face in frustration. Then it's all been worth it. Let's not even get into the other suspect who shot herself in the head. Hey, that wasn't my fault. Well, it kind of was. Okay, it was totally my fault. Well, the fact that you're Everett Claire's little peony now, doing I don't know what for him. That's small-time stuff. That's nothing. That's a humorous anecdote. This guy has no sense of humor. Compared to the eight people who were gunned down, the streets are literally red with blood, Harry. It was fucking mass murder. I mean, it wasn't exactly mass murder. It was a battle. People died on both sides. He did everything he could. The lieutenant interrupts him. We did everything we could. The company hired unvetted mercenaries. Lieutenant Dubois got between them and the locals. Here comes the cavalry. He did so at considerable risk to his person. Remember, he was shot. We stopped an execution, not a negotiation. The loss of life was minimal compared to what it could have been. Yeah, look at Kim stepping up to defend me. <laughs> uh, I want to say all of these, really, except five. Five is lame, but I want to say the rest of them. Firefight's a trivial matter compared to the greatest discovery of this century. Wait, it's better if I... <laughs> he says in a lowered voice. Thank you for the input, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I didn't mean to suggest you didn't handle the situation. He brushes a stray strand of hair out of his eye and coughs. You've spent a week with him on this case. What is your take? Not everything. Didn't have ceramic pants. True, but there were no ceramic pants. On the case? On Lieutenant Yefreto Dubois. Well, a cold gust of wind. He pulls up his collar. The drinking, the lost gun, also losing his badge. That's all true. And he's been drinking on the job. The man sighs deeply. 
Then there's the apocalypse thing. Nice! He brings up the apocalypse thing! Yes! At first I thought it was a joke, but it's not. He actually thinks the world is about to end in a bloodletting or a gloaming, but about to become vapor even. He's quoting all the things I've said! <laughs> Oh, and now he's bringing up my fucking communist shit, too. This is awesome. It's worrying. Especially considering his political views. Detective Dubois is, as you may know, a Mazovian socio-economist. Economist. He wants to liquidate the ruling class. Which, again, for a police officer, is a little odd. <laughs> yeah, it is. Odder still. He is also an uh, ultra-liberal hustler who is always, he pinches the root of his nose on the grind. <laughs> How he reconciles these two points of view, I do not know, but he is vocal about both of them. And then there's the motor carriage in the sea and the drugs, of course, some kind of anti-radiation drug he uses to induce visions. He breathes in sharply. But, despite all this, he is a great detective. One of the best I've seen, in fact. Thank you, Kim! He can talk human beings into telling him everything, and he doesn't stop. In all the time I've spent with him, he has not once stopped pursuing leads, however far-fetched and tangential. Well, I mean... Look, sometimes you have to look for cryptids and, and, and investigate a curse and shit. He is tireless. Madly driven. Well. A valiant effort! Except that one time when he stopped to sing karaoke. Which, by the way, I have to disagree with you, Mr. Vikmar. Was a valiant effort. He really sang his heart out. I failed the karaoke thing, and it was a disaster. Okay, he did something. Other than that one time, he has tirelessly worked on the case. And he solved it. We have a confession, a murder weapon, and the perpetrator. Locked on the island right now, awaiting transportation. He apprehended a revolutionary brigade who stayed hidden for 50 years, ever since the revolution, who's probably committed other murders over those years. He pauses. Oh, and he also discovered a new species. Dude, I fucking rocked this shit while trying to fail at every turn. I'm now a little bit concerned that the ending won't be that different on my second playthrough. If I've managed to do this well, while constantly trying to do the dumbest possible thing. Uh, new species. A colossal stick insect. It was on the island, camouflaged as the reeds. It unfolded from the reeds. I think we may be dealing with the Insulindian Phasmid. He takes out the photo of the phasmid and shows it to the officers across the yard. The wind blows, flapping the glossy rectangle in his hand. You hear gas beneath the howling of the wind. As you can see, it's about three meters tall. In fact, we think it may be the largest land invertebrate ever discovered. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to decide what to say here. These are wonderful options. I don't like giving up opportunities to pitch communism. So, as you can see, I'm a pretty okay detective and an absolutely giant communist. He ignores you, still staring at the phasmid. 
fucking hell is that? Is this somehow connected to the case, detective? this even mean? Boom! 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 Yes? <laughs> he just says yes! Like, <laughs> like he's handling a small child, as he often has through this game. Yes, but also... <clears throat> yeah. I believe the pheromone it emits may be responsible for the killer's mental degradation. The old man was not aware of the phasmid's presence, exhibiting a strange atypical dementia. He fell into a stupor after its appearance, became near catatonic. So it is connected? Dot, dot, dot. Fuck you, kid, Gene. Nothing to say. I must say, this, he points to the photo, is absolutely extraordinary. It's... I don't even have words for it. Yes. It really does make it hard to fire the drunk. His tired eyes follow the photo as the lieutenant puts it away. This is a lot. This is a very, very sad man who has just seen something that made him forget his sadness. I did also do a lot of things, didn't I? <laughs> Number one is not gonna help my case here! <laughs> I gotta go with number one. Um, I also started a nightclub and a drunk lab in the church. <laughs> Actually, you didn't. What do you mean? I told them a police raid will sweep the church in two days, which, by the way, it will. If they have any brains, they won't be producing in there. Wait, when did you do this? When you were out. Why? Because I'm a police detective, and manufacturing drugs is illegal. God damn it, this is why cops are no fun. They just allow organized crime syndicates that murder people by the dozens and fucking human trafficking rings that are selling children to be raped every day they just allow that shit to go on for years for decades but they gotta bust every little person who's fucking trying to sell or do drugs like that's what fucking matters fucking cops i'm just saying Wait, he tried to set up a drug lab? That's why Kim dishes you in the evening to go back and unfuck up your deeds of the day. That's awesome. <laughs> he tried to set up a drug lab? No. He just let some youth set up a club in the church. They thought they could produce in there. They won't. The building was abandoned. It was an okay idea. Better than having them out on the ice. A confiscated drug from Kuno's dad? Who's Kuno? Oh, if you don't even know Kuno, get the fuck out of here, Jean. You're just a pretender if you don't even know who the local kingpin is. You don't want to know. <laughs> he gives no fucks. 
You're right, Lieutenant. I don't. He turns to you. You snorted the drugs. I know you did. It's all right. I mean, at this point, anything is but the drink. There was also... No, let's start with the dumbest one. I also looked into the mystery of the doomed commercial area. He shrugs. I don't know what a doomed commercial area is. Yeah, well, the tur curse turned out to be possibly entropanetical. Part of my larger investigation. Into Martinez itself. No, it didn't. It didn't turn out to be entropanetical again. Enough with the isolare pale two millimeter hole in the world line. This isn't Paradox B. We're a police force. Askel, no, this is my character's partner, and actually, I outrank him. I'm a lieutenant double your freighter, which means I'm a lieutenant who's been offered promotion twice and turned it down. He's a satellite officer. A satellite officer refers to an officer who's only achieved their their rank because they've been partnered with someone else who got promoted a bunch. So he's literally my inferior. But he likes to act like he's real important. Just because, you know, he's professional and does his job right. Accuse Jean of riding your coattails, right? Kitsuragi is a detective from a different precinct who came here to help me on this case. He's been my partner throughout the game, but he's not my character's actual partner. This guy is, but this guy's a dick, and, I, and he hasn't been here to help me at any time. It doesn't look like the lieutenant wishes you to push this anger further. Cut it out is indeed what he is thinking. Also, the phasmid was female. The reeds are its nest. Yeah. Actually, it's been more than a week because my character was here for like three days before the game started. So I've been here for like 11 days or some shit. After the thousandth completed task? <laughs> yeah. It's possible, fellow real person. He could just be massively sick of Harry's shit. Female. What makes you think so? You had to see it. It had the subdued colors of a female. The nesting behavior, too, I think. Wait a minute, so suddenly we're experts on this species that heretofore didn't exist? Suddenly we know what colorations this brand new species that didn't exist <laughs> referred to? We can fucking just tell male from female in this brand new species that didn't exist? What the fuck are we, R Richard Attenborough? What, am I Dr. Science? Okay. Might be basing it on birds. Sure, sure. I'm sure we're basing it on something. <clears throat> it was definitely female. Incredible. Were there eggs in the nest? Not as far as I could see. There were other things there, though. He turns to you. It, it had gathered items in its nest. A helmet, a scope, and a passport. Actually, you know, this would indicate it was a male. This is far from anything in my field, but I think such nests are called bowers. They are for attracting mates. I still think it was female. Of course, as I said, I'm only guessing. I didn't see it. He pauses, turning something over in his head. 
It must be robust if it can move a whole helmet with its limbs. Motherfucker was three meters tall. When you're three meters tall, you can move whatever the fuck you want. <clears throat> I think it reproduces by parthenogenesis. Because that's what uh, Lena told me, right? As in cloning itself. What makes you think so? A male phasma that took those items to a nest to lure Clausy there for a scandal. Okay, wow, well, you just took that to a weird. a weird. level. Three meters tall, but three centimeters thick. Uh, it told me? Hmm. He ignores your answer! What the fuck, Trant? Then it wouldn't matter if it's male or female. The bower would just be a rudimentary behavior from before the parthenogenic uh, mutation. Very interesting. He looks around, quickly assessing the coast. Such organisms are extremely vulnerable to disease. A single strain of bacteria could wipe out the whole species. We're probably looking at conservation efforts here. I think it emits a chemical. It makes it look even more like the reeds. Hmm, yes. That would be a chiromon. A pheromone that's seemingly beneficial to the host. It usually stimulates the affected nervous system. Not a human's, of course, but uh, perhaps a predator's. Perpetrator seemed intoxicated somehow. Like an addict. It was just a hunch, but... There are species of bees that, uh, under the influence of caramons, take wasp larvae to their hives. Ants do the same with aphids, thinking they're... He stops. Do you think this is how it stayed hidden? Nothing is off the table, but... I want to stress this. The find does not have to be connected to the case. The case is 100% prosecutable without any chiromones. Yeah, but the find is connected to the case. Of course, Lieutenant, of course! We should treat the case and the phasmid as completely separate from each other. People are not going to... He shakes his head. They're not going to go for this speculation in the constabulatory. Yeah, well, it had mandibles that looked like hair. And it was completely white on the inside. Yes, but also reed colored. Beige and brown. A little green on the outside. After unfolding from a single stalk, it still retained parts that looked like reed tufts on its limbs. Incredible, he repeats, turning to the Khmer. The PR value of this is exceptional. Cop discovers new species. Maybe even discovers the Insulindian Phasmid. No, that's too much. This would really help with some of the problems we've been having. Absolutely. This is great. This does not say vigilante murderers to me at all. This says science, news, human interest. He smiles. You know, it's a really good thing you have that photo. Without it, uh, he shakes his head. You're doing good here. Perhaps only for a moment, but still. There was also a dead man on the boardwalk. A missing person I found. Yes, yes. Fall into the gap in the boardwalk. Drunk. How did you know I found him? The body was transported to Precinct 41. Our morgue. I had Tilbrook and Mullins take care of the funeral arrangements and family stuff. 
You're not the only cop in the world, Harry. This all comes back to us. Still, she says quietly, good work with the missing person, detective. And I also fix the strike situation. How? Oh. It seems to be ongoing. I see red banners on the gates. He didn't quite solve it. He cross-pollinated information between the company rep and Everard until the rep came to see that the union desires war, at which point Mrs. Messier decided to... He shrugs. What? Hand declare the terminal? I masterminded a solution to an unsolvable problem. I did it for the world revolution! I got a skill point? Okay. Level up! Am I even gonna have a reason to use any more skill points at this point? A clerical error. Onox. You got a finger gun for that one. I don't know what it means, though. He's just dot dot dotting. <laughs> oh, number two! Yeah, my authority is not good. I'm kind of a shitty cop. Also, not real logical or knowledgeable. I'm really good at the things I'm really good at, though. EAT THE PIGS! <laughs> Fuck you. You just got played by Everett Clare. Duped. For the hundredth time. It's not quite like that. The move allowed us to stabilize things here. It was not bad for Martinez. And we don't owe anyone anything. Okay. A slow nod. The previous head of the Dibdars Union was assassinated by our killer. The lieutenant hit, lowers his voice just a little. This is a conversation for when we are no longer out in the open in Martinez, where Everett and Edgar Clare have ears everywhere. Understood, of course. But a case against Everett would be big. The consultant, too, has lowered his voice. I would prefer not to partake in anything union-related uh, for political neutrality. Political neutrality is for cowards. Like, not just as a joke, but actually for cowards. But also as a joke. But also actually. But also as a joke. Hashtag for cowards. That's true, Knox. And the killer? Lilianovich Dros. We have a strong motive for him. Ish. I'm still not convinced that he basically only did it because of the phasmid, though. Although, I guess not. He said he'd killed other people through the years and stuff. Probably before he was completely affected by the phasmid, so who knows. <clears throat> Lilianovich. The special consultant raises an eyebrow. A revolutionary matronym. A revolutionary matronym? Hashtag making shit up. The custom started in Grad with a patronyms. Krasovich, Larsovich, etc. The revolutionaries saw this as a chauvinist atavism, so they used matronyms, derived from the mother's name instead. He mixes fantasies about killing degenerates with memories. That's true, fellow. That could also be true, since his brain has literally been eroded by the phasmid, and he has holes in his brain, and, and he could easily have false memories. This man's mother was Lillian, 
He's Lillian's son, Lilianovich. This custom was overturned after the revolution failed, but not before it made it to Revachol. So, it is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. Thank you, Trant. Thank you for that piece of cultural theory. He turns to you. You said you have a motive. Of course, excuse me, I just thought it was noteworthy. Thanks for the windblown chicken again, Trant. Um... Oof. I mean, number one seems like the straightforward answer that we were led to believe. Number two is not true. We've debunked that theory already through conversing with him. But I still kind of feel like it's number three. Although this isn't going to make them as happy. Matronymics were a real thing, by the way. Matronymics sound cool to me. This is the best answer, probably. But I'm gonna go with this one. You killed him in an act of rage induced by the phasmid semio chemicals. Possibly induced. He corrects you. But even without that, this man spent 50 years on the islands in the bay, in solitude, loathing what Revachol has become. There's plenty for a prosecution to pick from in terms of motive. Also, we have a sniper's nest with full view of the room in which the mercenary died, right on the island, and two officers on the scene that Mr. Dross confessed to. It's a clean win. It's way more than that. They'll teach this in cop school. <laughs> the Dubois method. We gotta, we gotta stick with this delusion. It's way more than that. It'll win me Dora back. That's not how personal relationships work, Harry. You found a straggler. The first since the 30s. Kudos. But that doesn't change anything. He buttons his jacket. It doesn't hide the smell of booze on the wind, either. God damn it. It is bad. Even you can smell it. Just a little celebration. Chin up. Keep focusing on the positives here. What do you say? You want to take this hot shit back? Point to yourself. I don't want to. But you discover the new species. And solve the murder. He shrugs. So I... Have to... Jude... Quick nod. Honestly, anything that ends this trial is okay with me. But he's been drinking, she thinks. This is exactly how he gets out of this every time. It's bad for him, but... Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too valuable to let go. Boom. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Completed every task. Actually, I didn't quite complete every task. I did fail a task straight up. Interview the Sunday friend. I That task was cancelled because I was such a dick to this guy. There's another one that I fucked up too. But I don't think it counts as cancelled. Even though I definitely fucked it up. And it was talking to the... Talking to the missing guy's wife. About the missing guy. Remember how bad I botched that? It was a shit show.
People killed went up to four. Okay, he sighs. We have vehicles in the square, and the perpetrator needs to be taken into custody. Let's go. Wait. I have a few questions before we go. About who I am. Oh yeah, I have no doubt that I missed some tasks, because certain tasks you only get off of certain successful skill checks or even making certain choices in dialogue. So I don't think these are all the tasks that exist in the game. They're just all the tasks I was given, and I got and I did them all. Um, the man looks westward impatiently. There are also hidden tasks. Yeah, exactly, Asko. Jingling his car keys in his pocket. I feel like this is the end of the game. I don't think it's gonna let me go wander around town anymore after this. Who am I? Who are you? You're a gym teacher, Harry. What? Well, obviously you're not a gym teacher anymore, but... But before... Before you were a cop, you were a gym teacher in Coron. She looks around. It's getting really cold outside. Should we maybe... No way! I was Relevator, learned in the ancient art! You haven't told us about that. <laughs> you just told us about being a gym teacher. It does explain a lot. Harry, it explains everything. The running around, the jumping, the shot put, your inexplicable facial hair. The collection of found sportswear I've amassed. The fact that you don't seem to know what homosexuality is. And now you're able to perform a 360 degree spin kick, too. Does this change? Like, based on your stats and your skills and the things you do in the game, does this change? Like, if you make a guy that's max intellect, minimum physique, never do any of the physical stuff in the game, do they tell you, oh, you were a science teacher before or something? Or is it always a gym teacher? Because all of this fits with the gym teacher. Isn't your motor X pretty damn low? Yeah, it is really low, but my physique is really high. You want to know? I guess I don't want to know. I guess I'll find out on my second playthrough. Um. But all of this is clearly actually responding to shit that I actually did. The incredible stamina output. Also, this guy. Just everything about this guy. W when was this? W when was I a gym teacher? Yeah, totally, Knox. In your 20s or late 20s, you really let yourself go since then. He looks you over. You said in Coron. I was a gym teacher there? Yes, you taught gym in Coron. I believe that's the term. Taught gym at the high school. You were a high school gym teacher. The smell of sweat and glue. The warm floorboards. High school. Harry, your goings on with Kuno, Andre, Asil. The whole thing on the ice. That's why you're so juvie. I see, I am kind of juvie. His smirk suggests barely contained laughter. Why did I join the RCM then? The regular, you found some chick. She inspired you to fight the big fight. Be more than you are, all that. You, every morning, walking from Voyager Road to teach Jim. She, leaving for the academy with her spring coat on. 
the air filled with the smell of smoke and raspberries and incredible hope. An ocean full of hope. Hold the fuck on. This is so typical. When I had... Now, it was just a dream, and who knows how reflective it was of Harry's actual relationship with his ex-wife, but at, at, at some point she was saying some things about how working at my horrible job as a detective was what caused the problems in their relationship. Like, that's what it had made me crazy, and that's what was fucking me up. So, is this one of those situations where, where she's like, oh, you gotta go do this other thing, it'll be so much better, be more ambitious. So then I do that thing, and then she's like, oh my god, why are you doing that terrible thing? It's fucking everything up. Because this is a story as old as time right here. Okay, I see now. I knew it. I knew no normal human being can run like that. He's an honest to God gym teacher. I had a girlfriend when I was twenty one. 21 or 22. And she was always telling me I wasn't ambitious enough, that I needed to be more ambitious. It was the only complaint she had about me as a human being, which was very generous of her because there was a lot of other things she could have complained about me as a human being. But she just, she would harp on me about this ambition thing. And I was always like, I don't really think you want me to do that. I think if I really was as ambitious as you think I should be, that ultimately you would end up not liking it. Because I would be too ambitious to pay attention to you anymore. <laughs> that's, that's what would actually happen. Because that's what always happens. Why am I like this? I mean, she was hyper-ambitious. It wasn't like she was being hypocritical. She was a massive overachiever. And I was a massive underachiever. So the whole opposites attract thing, I guess, but... She would criticize me for it, nonetheless. I mean, not really in a mean way. She wasn't... She wasn't mean to me. She just... She thought for my best good that I should be more ambitious or whatever, but I still feel like the ultimate outcome of that wouldn't really have been something that she would have liked in the long run. I, you know. Um, male wants to oppress a female, male puts in the effort, the female feels abandoned and leaves, the male is forever broken. Yeah, it's a really common thing. Hmm. That's kind of sad, isn't it? Why am I like this? It's not a mystery. Some cheek fucked you over. Also, you're a drunk. You really went in with it, too. Really maximized the damage. What was her name, Dora? Yeah, Dora Ingerland, I think. Wait, Dora Ingerland? Something like that. Half Vassen. So we weren't even married? No one is married anymore. This is Revishol. When was this? God, I don't know. He thinks. Six years ago? She was way before my time. Six years and you haven't gotten over it. The hell is wrong with you? Oh, okay. Six years is not that much. Yeah, you're not doing too good there. It's an old man thing, I think. Two old years <laughs> equals one normal. I've never heard the phrase old years before. Like, you're talking about dog years. <laughs> like, old people have different years. But the thing is, it immediately rings true to me.
<laughs> because I feel like that's so true for me as I've gotten older. In real life, I mean, I'm not old, but I'm much older than I was at one point, and like, I do feel like larger chunks of time feel like shorter chunks of time did when you're younger. I mean, that just makes sense, right? No one is married anymore. Tell that to the woman whose husband died that got the news delivered in a spectacularly bad way. Yeah, that was, that was my bad. Yeah, talking about Josiah time. Hashtag old years. Two old years equals one normal year. That and Dora England really tore you a new one. A big one. Who was she? Incredibly bangable? Huh? She was extremely fuckable, Harry. Gorgeous. A gorgeous bourgeois woman. Wayfish. Like a Welkin, basically. What the f- How does he know what Welkins are? John, are you a gamer? Heartbreak Welkin. Pain Welkin. I've only seen a picture, but it's obvious you formed a real spiritual connection with how pretty she was. One you never recuperated from. Look, I can relate to that, okay? Look, she turns to face the sea. The sun is going down. It's time to go home. I think she taught in the Académie des Arts, uh, east of the river. Way east. That's where the rich people are. Even the deserter can relate to that. Hard to say which came first, the middle glass chick or the drink? Egg and the chicken kind of thing. My point is, you need to see a psychiatrist about this shit. Not a psychologist, several degrees harder. Is there something harder than a psychiatrist? He pauses to think. A forensic psychiatrist. Go talk to that. <laughs> I don't just need a psychiatrist. I need a forensic psychiatrist. My shit is that fucked up. Okay. Am I a dirty cop working for La Puta Madre? No. No, because the suspects seem to think... Psychiatrist that's in a forensi. Oh, Knox. You're too unstable to work for a mob boss. You're suicidal, Harry. No mob boss would take you. Yeah, mob bosses are well known for only employing extremely, extremely mentally stable uh, and, and well-reasoned individuals. I assure you, I wouldn't consult for a corrupt unit. I told you, it's not that bad. Dan would be like, I'll pass. Um... Phasmid. I need to tell Lena about this ASAP. Who is Lena? A cryptozoologist. She lives in Jamrock on Tabernacle Road. She told me about this phasmid. Tabernacle? It's on the way over, near where you live on Perdition. She looks at Vikmar. Fan, if we're gonna drop you off anyway. She and her husband were conducting the search for the phasmid. It's their discovery, in part. Not really. They just told me about the thing. They didn't actually discover shit. The places they were putting their traps were in the completely wrong area. It's pretty much 100% my discovery. Let's keep it real. I'll give them some credit, though, because I am generous, but... They should know as soon as possible. It would do you good to deliver some positive news for a change. And their traps were a joke compared to the size of that thing, yeah. He's going to be over the moon. Watch out or she'll faint. 
That is not the correct spelling of faint. I'm pretty sure she's not going to psych me out with a fake attack. Lena made you believe it, and believing in it is why you detected. That's actually a fair point, fellow. That's a fair point. Precinct 41. What kind of station is it? Us? We're the bloody murder station, haven't you heard? We're the bad guys. No one likes us. That's not true. Jamrock is too big for one precinct. You're just understaffed. And everyone respects the 41st. You have Captain Price. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, you're being kind. It is an understaffed station, and the district is too big. Which is why we need to... He tilts his head northward. Get back to it. We left Torsen and McLean to run the Sea Wing. It's not good. Did we recently shoot up a church by any chance? So he remembers that. Yes, there may have been a raid on some churches. It wasn't good press. Shooting up churches never is. I was out of town, to be clear. What happened? Why do we need to go there? Our enemies were hiding in a church, to the best of our information. That's it. I'm not talking about this anymore. Your security clearance is shit here right now. You have to wait for it to go up. What? Your clearance will not go up while you're within earshot of the Union headquarters. I get it. I get it. Say no more. Where the sea wing is? God, he sighs. There are four wings, Harry. A, B, C, and D. We're in C. It's made of losers and clock punchers. You and I reconceptualized it as a task force. It was a mistake. Hey, what's up, Malashri? Welcome back. How you doing? Yeah, this is still my first playthrough, although I think I'm at the end. There's also a lot of outside help involved. Not only me. He smiles. Other losers, too. He's anything but a loser. Although he would like to be seen as one. It's cooler that way. And Price is... Ptolemy Price, he's the son of the old Price, one of the founders of the RCM. He's one of the most highly regarded men in the force. You're lucky. Somewhere under the curved roof of a former silk factory, shaped like a ladybird with two chimneys, police captain Ptolemy Price sits behind a heavy wooden desk. Resident medic Nix Gottlieb pours him coffee. It's silent in the captain's office. That Gottlieb guy is useless. They speak of change. The city. The tension on the streets. They speak of the events of April and the blood on the streets in May. Torson and McLean? Mac the Torso Torson and Chester Klein. She arches an eyebrow. They're not fit to run a wing. Believe me, things are shaky as it is. So I work in the bloody murder station? Seems like a completely appropriate place for Harry to work. I only killed one person. In this game. I wonder how many people you can technically kill. I mean, I kind of killed Ruby in a sense, but not really. Oh, you're right. He should be Chester the Chest McLean. Okay. It's not a bloody murder station. It's an old converted silk mill with green desk lamps and a coffee corner. A lot of good people work there. Hard. Every day. Jamrock is the largest ghetto in Revishaw. 
Balborg technically, but it's divided into 11 districts. Shamrock only has us. The press will blow over, he says in a reassuring tone. Shamrock is lucky to have you, and it's often considered to be the greatest of the districts. You're lucky to have it. Thank you again, Lieutenant. Wait. Thank you again, Lieutenant. Lieutenant Kitsuragi. What will you do now? I don't want to say goodbye to Kim. He's my best buddy. Well, first I will go back to my station and write the most detailed report anyone has ever seen. It will have to be good to cover all this. Then, I will have a serious talk with my captain. About what? He takes a look around, into the deepening shadows of the streets. He is the chronicler, then pulls up his collar. Detective, we just stopped a small-scale war. Something is happening to Revachol. I don't know what yet, but it's going to be a hard spring for the RCM. We need to get ready. Infiltrate. Investigate. Distant traffic. A scrap of newspaper drifts by, carried by the wind. It says, tensions rise in Terminal YC, in light of the Debadur strike in Terminal B. Among representatives of heavy industry in Coal City. You read. Legendary percepti perception. You want to do that at Station 41? Talk to Captain Price? I'd rather not ruffle the feathers of two captains with my doom mongering. No, I meant investigate! Come work in Precinct 41! Work with Price? No, work with me! Don't make it about Price! A crooked smile quivers on his lips. I'm flattered, but I don't know if I... would fit in. Him crazy enough? Can take distress? He doesn't know how to finish the sentence. There's a price to pay if he works there? <laughs> I've been bumping up my perception here and there. I put a couple points into it. I'm wearing all of the clothes that adds the perception right now. And I also got a couple of thoughts that give me a bunch of bonuses to perception. So my perception has ended up pretty high, even though it was really low in the beginning. It's actually impressive if you think about it. Starting with a 1 in Motorix and having a 10 perception is actually kind of amazing. He doesn't know how to finish the sentence. Flattered? Your Lieutenant Kitsuragi. We would be flattered if you even considered. The man turns very serious all of a sudden. I would have to tie things up in grief first. But, I mean, whatever is coming, Jamrock will be more central to it than the harbor. And we also have a huge caseload, Lieutenant, she says with a smile. Piles that we need to get back to. Mountains, even. I do like the sound of that. He returns her smile. I'm ready. I'm not ready! I'm not ready. I don't want to end. Guys. Yeah, look how many look how many thoughts I didn't unlock. That's amazing.
I earned 52 skill points. If indeed this is the end of the game, I earned 52 skill points. That is many, many more than I thought you'd be able to get in the game. Thirty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I mean, forty-one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. That would be fifty-six. Sixty. Seventy. Ninety, a hundred, a hundred and nine, fifty two skill points, a hundred and nine tasks. Yes, I did get all the armor pieces, Asko. And I got every piece of the Faun, the Faun outfit, and when I put them all on, like a special little thing happened. It was kind of cool. I didn't miss the pants, there were no pants. He said, when we, when we first investigated the guy, they said there were no pants. Come up, pants. Of course. And it says I completed it. One hundred and nine tasks, fifty two skill points. That is more of both of those things than I thought the game was going to have. And I'm sure that's not every task that's actually available. Not to mention thoughts. I only unlocked 20 thoughts. You've seen pants but failed to get them? Where did you see them? I only unlocked, unlocked 20 thoughts. Look how many there are. Crazy. Alright. Let's do this. I'm ready. Good. She looks at you, then Vikamer. Fuck it, let's go! The man points down the street. Trance brought his motor carriage. It's a 20 minute drive to Jamrock. Under the night sky, Great District sleeps. Black chessboard of wooden houses. A thousand living souls inside. Fire traps as the eye can see. From Main Street to Precinct 41 atop the motor. Boogie Street forking to darkened horizon. Close your eyes and hear the dogs bark. A lone woman sits by a factory window. Strikes on a rue de Saint Jerome. A square bullet slides into a square shaped chamber. South, a man without eyelids smiles. Spring has come. It's time. 
Dorson? Yes. McLean? Yes. Heidelstam? No. Bicamer? Yes. Dubois? Of course. Really? Nick Scottlieb looks up from the list. I hear he's unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing, Captain Ptolemy Price gestures with a ballpoint pen. It's dim in the office and the curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through. When he does, he'll side with the people. Understood. Gottlieb returns to the list. I know? Of course. Wonderful. The woman looks north. Then can we please just go back to Jamrock now? Straight to a big old title card, apparently. Damn! It's over! Why? Why does it have to be over? That is spectacularly loud. Well, they said they want to make more games in this setting if they can, like, like if it's financially possible. So, man. That was a great game. I guess I got the best ending, probably? I mean, it seems like I... It seems like I succeeded. So, I don't know how there could really be a much better ending than that. Yeah, that's true, Sarath. It's because they put so much more love and artistry into these games compared to just the, like, production line churned out corporate crap that the big companies do, you know? I mean, sure, once in a while a AAA company will put out a good game, but... This was... a spectacular RPG. I mean, one of the best ever made. One of the best games of its type ever made. Maybe, maybe the best game of its type ever made. Now, I gotta say... This does not supplant Planescape Torment for my favorite game of all time and my favorite RPG because special thanks to Swim Vink. That's the that's the guy from Larian Studios. Oh, there's Larian Studios. Um, that's interesting. I wonder if they got some advice or financial assistance or. Something from the Larian Studios guys. Um, this could be the best game of its type that I've ever played. Um, I still don't like it quite as much as Planescape Torment because, and I'll tell you why, not because it's not as good as Planescape Torment, but because I simply find the themes less interesting in this. I'm not into detective stories. I'm not into cop stuff at all. The idea of playing a cop is, is distasteful to me. 
um, the idea of solving a murder is the most boring thing to me. Like, I've already seen a million shows and movies about cops solving a murder. No matter how many twists you put into it, it is thematically uninteresting to me at its core. But, that is testament to how great this game is. In that it took a, a theme, a, a setting, a genre, that I don't even like, and made it a thoroughly enthralling experience from start to finish. I prefer fantasy and sci-fi settings to fa settings that are more realistic like this and yes this did have some very minimal fantasy elements you could say but it's not a fantasy game it's a it's a realistic game i mean it's in it's in a semi-modern semi real world setting um which to me is less interesting inherently Because there's less to discover, right? There's less to discover about the world. There's less mysteries. There's less weird shit. And Planescape Torment has one of the most mystery and weird shit filled fantasy settings in an RPG. So, um, for me, Planescape Torment is more enthralling because of its setting and themes being so removed from reality. This is very close to reality. But, even though the setting and the themes, the genre, are things that I find less interesting, that means Planescape Torment is going to remain my favorite game of this type. Actually, it's my favorite game, period. But it's going to remain my favorite game but I can still say that in terms of craft, in terms of innovation, in terms of mechanics and systems, in terms of implementation of the role-playing concept into a video game, this game is better. It does it better. It's an evolution. It takes what Planescape Torment tried to do and simply does it on a higher level. It does it on a higher level. Um, and so... I think this is... On the extremely short list of best RPGs of all time, if not actually the best RPG of all time. I'll tell you whether I really think it's the best RPG of all time after I play it a second time and see how much stuff can be different. With different choices and a completely different character. Um... Let me see, I haven't really been paying attention to chat. Was it boring to touch Dead Man's Jump? No, that wasn't boring, of course. It was done really, really well. It's about society. Yeah, that's true, fellow real person. The detective work is almost just like a pretext that the game was hung on. And that's fine. It had a lot of world building. It absolutely has a ton of world building. There's no question that the world felt incredibly fleshed out, detailed, and believable. Incredibly so. At no time did I feel like, oh, this doesn't seem like a, like a real world that would exist. This doesn't seem... At no time did I ever feel that. The characters were incredibly well designed, deep and well realized and believable. Even the characters that were more absurd and over the top still felt like they had depth and and personhood to them. To a very impressive degree. Right? There was nobody in this game that was boring to talk to. I mean, some characters were certainly more interesting than others, more entertaining than others, but none of the characters just felt like cardboard cutouts, which a lot of characters in 
virtually all RPGs do, right? So in that respect, it's simply superior. World building's the reason you mostly love sci-fi and fantasy. Yeah, me too. Want to adapt Disco Sil skill system with the Nameless? And that would be amazing. I mean, I found the Nameless one to be a little bit more of an interesting character than Harry because the Nameless one is more mysterious. There's more mystery there. You already basically know what Harry is from the beginning, and even the details about who he is, like his name and other things, you find out very easily. The Nameless One is still mysterious, even at the end of the game, in Torment. The poor guy whose sandwich you took, losing his friend. Yeah, oh. In terms of humor, this game is the funniest RPG. There's never been an RPG as funny as this game. And that's especially impressive given the fact that this game is actually quite serious and has a lot of emotionally resonant scenes and, and, and narrative threads. It has a lot, of, a lot of darkness in it as well. So considering the fact that it is actually a serious game with serious themes and serious storylines and dark things going on, the fact that it's able to do that well and, like, make you feel things emotionally and make you feel invested in the characters while also having as much laugh-out-loud humor as this has is really an impressive achievement. I think a lot of games try to do that and they fail. They just fail. And this game nailed it. Um... The two Skull guys were pretty much the only people who felt like... Yeah, they were kind of a little throwaway. I mean, they, you only interacted with them very briefly for that one little scene. So they weren't really fully fledged, fleshed out characters. That's true. Maybe the Nameless One was also a gym teacher. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. This game is hilarious. I mean, it made me laugh out loud. Genuine laughter so many times and yet it didn't just make me laugh right there's a lot of games out there that that just try to be comedy games and everything in them is a joke and they break the fourth wall all the time and they make a lot of pop cult culture references and everything about them is just meant to be funny but it's not that funny it's more of a huh look at that that's cute sort of humor and i don't like those games i'm sick to death like I've said this before, I'm sick to death of comedy fantasy, right? Because it seems like about 60-70% of every fantasy game that is made is comedy fantasy. Where everything is just played for laughs, where everything is just- where they're literally just making fun of the fantasy genre, essentially. And everything's just silly. I'm sick of that shit. I hate comedy fantasy. I want some, like, hard-boiled, you know... Grim dark. It doesn't have to be grim dark either, because I'm also kind of sick of horror fantasy. It seems like if you're not comedy fantasy, you're usually horror fantasy, and I'm sick of that too. There is a there is a place in there that you can make a fantasy book or movie or show or game that isn't comedy, and it isn't horror. Yet that seems to be the rarest kind of fantasy. Um. And so, all these games that are out there that try to be really funny, most of them aren't really that funny. Or even if they are funny, that's all they are. That's all the game is, is just funny. It doesn't give you any, any pathos. It doesn't give you any scenes where you feel emotionally affected. It doesn't draw you into characters and make you care about them. It's just, oh, this game's just funny. It's just funny. That's all it is. So for a game like this to be as funny as it is, while still being a serious game that draws you into its story, its world, and its characters in, in the, way, the way that it does, is truly an achievement. And it speaks to the talent and 
And Siri, seriously, do you think I'm talking to you right now? Because I'm not. Shut your mouth. You don't even have a mouth. So shut your speaker. Shut your fucking speaker, Siri. Okay. So it speaks to the... I mean, I hesitate to say the word brilliance because it sounds like hyperbole, but to the brilliance of the, of the developers, of the people who wrote this game, who designed it. Uh, art style, real nice. I mean, maybe not exactly the art style I would choose if I was designing my own perfect hypothetical game, but I liked it. It worked. It was nice to look at. It was unique. No complaints about the art style. Um, but the writing is where this game shines. You know, a lot of games come out and people say, Oh, it has good writing. But I think what they mean in many cases is, it has good writing for a video game, right? This is good video game writing. This game has good writing for writing. <laughs> Not for video game writing, for any writing. This game has a literary quality to it, which is so rare in video games. And it's one of the things I love most about Planescape Torment, which is why that's always been my favorite game since it came out, is because it feels literary, not just like a game where the writing only exists to serve the purpose of gameplay. In many games, the writing only exists to convey the story in such a way that, that it carries the game along. Whereas in this, the writing feels like... like art. It feels like it is there to be enjoyed and engaged with and thought about for its own sake, not just as a tool to... to string along with gameplay or whatever. Do you think Numenera was literary? Um... Yeah, but not as good, right? Like, it had the literary quality, certainly, but it just wasn't as good. It wasn't as good as Planescape Torment, and it wasn't as good as this. This game is pretty much 100% about writing. Yeah, it is, but it's not just a text adventure either. You are walking around in an isometric graphical space. You are clicking on things. You do have an inventory and items, and everything is graphically represented. And you talk to different characters, and there's pictures of them. And you see the scenery of all the places you're going. And there's music, and there's lighting effects, and there's a day-night cycle, and there's... There's this whole skill system with, with skill checks being rolled with dice, you know? So it's a game. It's not just an interactive fiction. It's not just a choose-your-own-adventure book. It is a game. It is an RPG. And I take issue with the people that I've seen say, Oh, this is basically just a point-and-click adventure. The fuck it is! It's not just a point-and-click adventure. It's a role-playing game. The only thing it doesn't have is a combat engine. And it has very few scenes which could be considered combative. It does have a few scenes which are combative, and they're handled through dialogue, and they're handled with skill rolls. Those are still combat systems. There's just not a combat engine, and there's not a bunch of filler combat. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love combat in RPGs, and frankly, I would not have minded if this had a little bit more combat. I mean, I, the combat could be done exactly the way that it was done in the game, through dialogue, through skill checks, without any sort of, like, okay, now we're breaking out into turn-based mode and you're moving around on a grid. I don't need that. But it would have been nice if there were a few more uh, situations like that in the game where... Because combat's exciting because the stakes are raised to the ultimate level, right? It's literally life or death. So those kind of scenes are exciting. I wouldn't have minded if there was a few more scenes like that in the game. If they had been appropriate for the story, if there had been a reason for them to be there. 
not filler combat, right? Not like, oh, you're moving between this side of the map and that side of the map, here's a random encounter. No, the game certainly didn't need anything like that. But if, if the story had included a few more scenes of physical conflict, I would have been cool with that, I would have liked that, but what was there was great, and, um, and just because it didn't have a lot of combat, or a, you know, specific gameplay combat engine type of thing, that doesn't make it not an RPG. In my opinion, RPGs need to do two things to be a good and real RPG. They need to give you the ability to mechanically define your character to a significant degree, and they need to give you the ability to narratively define your character to a significant degree. So that means choices. That means system choices, i.e. where you're saying, this is what my character can do, this is what they're good at, you know, you know I, in other words, attributes, skills, stats, gear, that sort of stuff that you can customize and make your character different from someone else's character and have that really matter in terms of the gameplay. And then narrative character definition where you get to make choices in character, you get to decide what your character says, you get to decide what your character chooses to do in situations and have that affect the story and be reflected to you reacted reacted to by the game itself if the game does those two things it's an rpg and i know that there's a lot of games out there that exist that are called rpgs that don't necessarily let you do one of those things or both of those things but to me those aren't our real rpgs i know that they still fall within the genre for um you know game development or or game sales purposes they're still called rpgs but to me they're not really rpgs this is absolutely an rpg and it is an excellent one it does the essential aspects of an rpg better than most rpgs that have ever been made so for someone to call this not an rpg for them to call it just a point and click adventure or just a choose your own adventure story frankly pisses me off. Those people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. It's not a point and click adventure. You don't have 24 skills and four stats in a point and click adventure. You don't have a whole inventory system with body slots with different items you can slot in that change your stats in a point and click adventure. You don't have hundreds and hundreds of dialogue options and ways to change the course of the story in a point and click adventure. You know what you know what kind of game you have those things in? A fucking RPG. <laughs> it is an RPG and I will defend it as such till the day I die. Have I ever played Age of Decadence? I played a little bit of Age of Decadence and while I really wanted to like it, I kind of bounced off of it. So this, to me, it delivered what it promised. It delivered what I wanted it to, and then some. I found about I found out about this game just like a couple of weeks before it came out, and as soon as I started reading about the game, I got really fascinated and really excited and I went and I read like every developer diary that they had on their website and I watched every interview with the developers that was on YouTube and I just steeped myself in every scrap of knowledge I could get about this game because I was so excited by what the developers said they were doing with this game the promises that they made their design philosophies that they claimed were shaping this game and i thought wow this is something that i've been waiting for for a really long time this is something that i almost never see if this game is what they say it is i'm gonna love this game more than almost any other game and i gotta tell you 
I am not disappointed. This game delivered what it said it was going to deliver. It is innovative in its systems. The idea of having all those skills and having them all have sort of their own personality and talk to you and even argue with each other in your head, never seen that in a game before. The, the sheer variety of the skills and how they sort of represent all of these parts of a person and a person's capabilities. It's not just like, okay, here's lock picking and here's shooting guns and here's persuasion and, you know, there you go. Your basic stuff. This breaks down all of these subtle little things. Like, the difference between the part of your brain that is logical and the part of your brain that is that is imaginative and the part of your brain that is aggressive and the and so forth and the the part of your brain that is pleasure seeking and the part of your brain that is artistically conceptual and like I've never seen a game have those kind of skills before and then the fact that those skills come up again and again and again and again and again and you can use them so many times in so many different situations and they actually they actually affect what your options are right if you don't make those passive checks for the skills you don't get the dialogue options that correspond to those skills and so the way you chose to build your character actually shapes your entire experience through the game it actually shapes what you have the option of doing or not doing it makes your character build choice and continuing choices as you put skill points into things and get better at them and what you know items you choose to equip and all that it makes those choices much more meaningful narratively than they are in any other rpg ever your choices in how you define your character mechanically have a greater impact on your experience and on the narrative than in any other rpg and that is a true achievement that is a triumph of rpg design and you can just see how much work it took them. The amount of extra stuff they had to write to make that work, to make that happen. So many developers cut corners in these games. They're lazy. And maybe that's not, not, maybe that's not fair. Maybe that's not fair to say lazy. They, they choose to spend their limited budget in other ways. Let's put it like that. They choose to spend their limited time in other ways. They prioritize other things. These developers chose to prioritize the true role-playing elements of a role-playing game above anything else. They chose to put the work, the time, and the money into that in a way that no one else has in an RPG. And... It creates a remarkable experience for a true lover of role-playing, role-playing games, role-playing writing, like myself. This is a game that feels like it was made for me. Right? I play so many games, and I think this is a pretty good game, but it feels like it was made for a little different audience than me. It feels like this was made for a little different kind of player than me. Or a wildly different kind of player than me. This feels like it was made for me. For me. And that is a feeling that I get from very few games. The last time I really, really got that feeling strongly, this strongly, was Planescape Torment. And that's why it's been my favorite game forever. Because I played Planescape Torment and said, holy shit, they made this game for me. And that's how I feel about Disco Elysium. And the fact that this is their first game, that these are indie developers who came out of nowhere, that no one's ever heard of, and this is their first try? 
and it's this well executed it is this artistically crafted it is this impressive is is just it's inspiring it's inspiring that that small indie developers can just come up out of nowhere and make something like this still today It gives me hope for the future of role-playing games. Oh, and I, of course it wasn't a smooth ride. This must have been so hard for them. They must have worked so hard and struggled and, and sacrificed to make this happen. I have mad respect for these developers. I will buy anything that these people make sight unfucking seen. The next game they develop, I will buy it no matter what it is. <laughs> I am I if I could pre-order right now, they can have my money. And honestly, the only I don't know if there's any other developers that I really feel that way about. Except maybe CD Projekt Red. These guys could be the next CD Projekt Red. So yeah. My conclusion, Disco Elysium. Possibly the greatest RPG of all time. Certainly one of the greatest RPGs of all time. Certainly one of the greatest story-based games, narrative-based games, text-heavy games. Simply top level. 5 out of 5 stars, 10 out of 10, 100 out of 100, whatever scale you want to use, these people get the best possible score from me. If you like this kind of game, you owe it to yourself to buy this and play it. That's it. That's my final word on the subject.